Today, I would like to share God's grace with a sermon entitled, Do I or Do We Have Stigma of Jesus? Stigma of Jesus. Today's main scripture comes from uh, the letter to the church in Galatia, right? So as an introduction, let's think about the main reason or the main theme of why Apostle Paul wrote this letter, right? So basically what happened is people in Galatia received the gospel of Jesus Christ and they became believers, right? But then later, some Jews came into the community of faith and started spreading a wrong teaching that God's chosen people ought to comply by the law of Moses, which brought a great confusion to the congregation of the church in Galatia, right? So the people, um, mostly they are, they, are, they are the Gentile, right? Uh, people received the gospel of Jesus Christ and became believer, yet the Jews came and said, no, you know, the God, in order to become a people of God, in order to become a God's chosen people, you got to comply by the law of Moses. You have to live by it, right? You cannot, uh, you have to live by it. That's the only way to become a people of God. That's the only way to be, uh, to receive salvation from God. And that actually made these believers in the church in Galatia, uh, confused greatly, right? So in order to explain and teach that salvation comes from faith, not from works, right? Come, the salvation comes from faith, not by keeping the law, not by works, not by deeds. Apostle Paul wrote this letter to Galatia. And you can see that in uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, that what Apostle Paul says to them, right? So nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified, justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, right? So that's the main theme here. Not by the works of the law, but by the faith of, of faith in Jesus Christ. If we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Right? So if I, sum if I summarize the main teaching of Apostle Paul in the letter to the Galatians, the law makes people known that they are sinners. Right? That, that's the purpose of it. Right? And the law uh, awakes and teaches people that we are sinners, right? We are sinners. But at the same time, it entitled, entitled them, it entitled man as the slaves of sinner, right? Because you are sinner or because we are sinner, now we are under that sin, right? We are under that sin. So uh, it enlightens us that we are sinners, but at the same time, it also binds us as the slaves of sinners, right? Slaves of sinners. However, the faith in Jesus makes people freed from their sins, right? Jesus forgives, right? The faith in Jesus forgives their uh, sins, right? So it frees them, it frees people from their sins and allow them to live under God's blessings, right? God's blessings. And then Apostle Paul in uh, Galatians, letter to Galatia, uh, he continues to say that the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus is not self-indulgence, in in, uh, uh, right? It's not self-indulgence, but it's to bear the bare fruit of righteousness through living by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, right? The freedom that we have is to bear fruit of the Holy Spirit by living according to the will of God and living according to the way of God. And after he explained all this in today's main scripture, uh, which is the last chapter of uh, letter to Galatia, uh, he says, Apostle Paul says, to the Jews who are saying, uh, to the Jews who are actually against Apostle Paul, and to the Jews who are saying, uh, are you not one of us who thought Jesus was a heresy? 
Because we, before, Apostle uh, Paul became, became uh, uh, believers of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, disciple of Jesus Christ, he was called Saul, right? And then this Saul uh, was, uh, was uh, one of the people who were chasing after uh, Jesus' followers to catch them and to uh, bring them to prison, right? So uh, there must be some Jews who are saying that, are you not... Uh, are you not one of us who thought Jesus was a heresy, right? Are you not one of us who were trying to catch the followers of Jesus Christ and put them into prison? And are you not one of us who believe that to comply by the law of Moses is the only way to come closer to God, right? And here in uh, today's main scripture, Apostle Paul tells them, From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, right? Because I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus Christ. The brand marks of Jesus Christ. So to the Jews who are saying these kind of things, right? Apostle Paul uh, proclaimed and announced that I uh, bear on my body, I bear the brand marks of Jesus Christ. I bear the brand mark of Jesus Christ. Greek word for brand marks is... Stigma, stigma. So stigma is the Greek word, right? Brand marks is a stigma, right? Mm. According to the culture of that time, only two kinds of people receive these brand marks or stigma. The first is the slaves of Roman general. Slaves of Roman general. Mm. So these slaves of Roman general they are considered as a so Roman soldiers, right? Roman soldier, but not a uh, free soldier, right? Not free agent soldier, but they are, uh, they are the, they are the servants. They are the slaves belong to, they are, they are the soldiers belong to one person, right? So if you are, if you are the Roman general, right? And, and you got about what? Uh, 100,000 or 3,000 uh, slaves, men slaves with you, right? When you go to the battle, you go with them. So these 3,000 slaves are your soldier, right? Your soldier. Uh, they are Roman soldiers, but belong to you directly. Mm. So that's the, uh, to those, uh, those people, those slaves, those soldiers, that belong to one general, one person, one particular person, right? They have this stigma. They have this brand marks, right? If it's a, if uh, if the sign of my uh, clan or my family is a uh, what eagle, then they may have a eagle, or if they may have a lion, they may have a you know some initial like right or David, whatever it is, right? Mm. So the first group of people who received this stigma was that slaves belong to the Roman uh, general. Or we can say Roman soldier belong to one a certain general, right? So these brand marks or the stigma on their body shows whom they belong to, right? Whom they belong to. The second group of people is the slaves Working in a temple of idols at that time, right? Uh, the slaves or the servants are working in a temple of idols, right? Those who are serving the temple, right? We can say servant or slaves, right? Mm. They also have this stigma on their body, brand marks on their body, right? That shows that they belong to God. Well, not capital G-O-D, but, you know, small letter G-O-D, right? They belong to idols. They belong to this temple. They belong to gods, right? So you can see there are two group of people. Uh, one is the slaves to the to a Roman general, and the other is the slaves to a god, either god, right, or to the, to a temple. And uh, equally, this stigma or this brand mark shows that they belong to some whom they belong to. Or it signifies that eternally their job is to serve in a temple, right? Their job is to serve in a temple eternally. So basically the stigma is the outward sign of eternal slavery. Eternal slavery, right? 
As Apostle Paul used this word or used this uh, stigma, right, to describe the relationship between Jesus Christ and himself, he was telling the people that he is the slave of Jesus for eternity, right? I mean, in verse 17, Apostle Paul says what? In verse 17, he says, From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand mark stigma of Jesus, right? I have stigma of Jesus on my body, which means I am a slave to Jesus Christ, right? And that relationship, that contract will last forever. It's the, it's the everlasting contract. It's the everlasting covenant. It's the everlasting, uh, relationship. I am a slave for Jesus Christ forever. Therefore, do not come and trouble me anymore, right? Do not ask me, were you not the one of us, right? Do you, do, do not come and ask me, were you not the one who believed Jesus was heresy, right? From now on, no one caused me any trouble because I belong to Jesus Christ and I am a servant. I am a slave for him, not only for temporary, but forever throughout my entire life. That's what he meant by saying, I have on my body the bone, the brand marks of Jesus, right? So if you look at Romans chapter 1 verse 1, Philippians chapter 1 verse 1 and Titus chapter 1 verse 1, we can say that Paul, Apostle Paul, uh, preferred to use this phrase to describe himself. Uh, Romans 1 verse 1, Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus, right? A bond servant of Jesus Christ. So, Apostle Paul introduced himself as the bond servant, as a slave of Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, through Jesus Christ, we became an adopted son, right? We became a son, we became a children of God, we became sons of God, right? Therefore, we can call our God Father and everything is correct and right, right? However, Apostle Paul is not talking about that, uh, it's not talking about that I'm not worthy to be called sons of God, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready to become a children of God. No, Apostle Paul is not talking about that, you know, that level or that kind of thing. But when it comes to, uh, serve God, when it comes to work for Jesus Christ, I am a born servant. I am a slave, right? Whatever Jesus Christ uh, ordered him to do, whatever Jesus Christ uh, God uh, asked him to do, he will just do it, right? He will just do it. So in that sense, he described the relationship with Jesus Christ as a slave, master and slave relationship. He is my master, I'm his slave, right? I'm his slave. Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, same. Paul and Timothy, born the servants of Christ Jesus, right? And Titus chapter 1 verse 1 also, Paul, a bond servant of God, right? So dear my brother and sister, do you want to have this slave mark on your body? Do you want to have this slave mark on your body? Some of you, some of you may have said yes and amen, and some of you may have said, whoa, well, let me think about it, right? To have a slave mark, I mean, does, does it, doesn't it sound a bit shameful? Doesn't it have a, I mean, think, I mean, naturally speaking, right? Naturally speaking, if we, if nowadays we don't, we do not have that culture anymore, but maybe some, uh, some countries, they may still have this, uh, slave ship, right? And uh, they may still have this uh, stigma or the brand marks on their body to show which house, which clan they belong to, right? And uh, as a free man, right, if we somehow be caught and be sold to other, you know, country and get this, got this mark, got this brand mark, and being called that you're the slave of A, A house or B house, right? Or you're a slave of a Kim's clan or Lee's clan, right? It may be. It, I think if we are, if we, if we were 
if we put ourselves in that shoes, we may feel uh, ashamed, right? It is a shameful thing to have the brand mark, right? As we can become free men, right? Why we should why should we have this uh, brand mark or slave mark on on our body, right? However, Apostle Paul never felt ashamed for this slave mark, right? He never felt ashamed to have this slave mark on his body. Rather, he boastfully announced it, right? In 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 verse 17, that he is proclaiming, he is declaring, he is announcing publicly, gladly and boastfully, that I have the brand mark, I have a slave mark of Jesus on my body. So do not trouble me anymore, right? Apostle Paul boastfully announced it. The reason why he boastfully, boastfully and publicly announced that is so that he won't be able to re retrieve his faith confession later, no matter what happens to him, right? In order so that he won't be able to uh, change his faith confession later when things happen, when bad things, when difficult things happen to him. Because he proclaimed that I have a stigma. Stigma is an eternal contract, isn't it? Eternal contract. It cannot be removed. It cannot be reverted. It cannot be canceled. It's on your body. It cannot be erased. Therefore, once you belong to that house, it is, it lasts forever, right? So when, when Apostle Paul confessed that I have a stigma of Jesus on my body, it means I am eternally belong to God. I eternally belong to God, right? I eternally. There is no turning back. There is no cancellation. There is no change of mind. So, my brothers and sisters, do we have the brand mark? Do we have stigma on our body? Do we have this slave mark of Jesus uh, on our body then? Should we not have the stigma on our body? Should we now have the brand marks of Jesus on our body? I'm sure we should, right? So let's pray, right? Let's pray. And uh, I pray that may you and I also have the slave mark of Jesus, brand mark of Jesus, stigma of Jesus on our body. So we boldly and publicly announce that we belong to Jesus Christ forever. And the only thing that we will do is we will serve Jesus Christ. We will work for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So what kind of stigma does a possible have? Uh, what kind of stigma does a possible have? Well, I think uh, there are many kinds of physical stigma, physical wounds and physical scars and physical injuries that he received for the sake of Jesus Christ in his ministry. But I think the Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 27 summarize all that, right? Summarize all that. So let's read it together because you can see it on the screen, right? Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I more so. In far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death, five times I received from the Jews thirty-nine lashes, three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and day I have spent in the deep. I have been a frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food in cold and exposure. Right? Mm. We can say these are the uh, Apostle Paul stigma, right? The physical stigma on their body. I mean, uh, now all of them would, 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 would mark, would give him a mark or the a scar, but certainly the five times of 39 lashes, right? The Jews believe that people will die if they have 
40 lashes, right? 40, the 40 times of beaten by lashes, then there will, there will, uh, there will, uh, people will die. So they made the rule that, uh, one person can only be beaten up to 39 times, right? 39 lashes. So that's the kind of extreme, one of the cruel, right? One of the brutal, brutal and cruel, uh, punishment that can be given, uh, among Jews, right? And, and Apostle Paul received not only one time of 39 lashes, but five times, right? Five times of 39 lashes. I mean, think about it. Physically, if 40 times, 40 lashes will kill a people, right? Then 39 will, uh, will make him at least half dead, isn't it? Half dead. It could break bones. It could, you know, uh, burst out organs, right? It could, uh, you know, burst out flashes, right? And Apostle Paul received five times of 39 lashes. Uh, certainly from this punishment, he could have, he would have some kind of scar, some kind of injury, some kind of a mark, right? Uh, and and these marks that uh that 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 uh, exist on his body, uh, he could say that these are the, these are my stigma, these are my brand marks, right? These are my brand marks of Jesus Christ. These are my stigma uh, of Jesus Christ, right? I mean, these are only a summary of what Apostle Paul had gone through. For the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? But then, how can we have stigma on our body then? How can we have the stigma on our body? Apostle Paul had these uh, circumstances, right? That uh, when he was uh, trying to deliver the uh, word of God and uh, trying to work for the gospel of Jesus Christ, trying to work for the sake of Jesus Christ, there were persecutions and there were punishments that caused him to have these scars and injuries and, and marks on their on his body, right? But how can we have the stigma then? How can we have the uh, brand marks then of Jesus Christ? Although we go out to the street and, and preach the gospel, preach the word of God, Right, evangelize people to uh, uh, church. Uh, not many, not uh, search, not such, uh, no such persecution would be given to us, isn't it? Not many countries in this world at the moment uh, would give us such persecution uh, for the sake of for when we work for Jesus Christ, when we minister for Jesus Christ, isn't it? I mean, still there, there are some places, right? Remote places and some countries that, uh, you will have, uh, you will receive, uh, uh, life threatening and the punishment because of the, uh, spreading the word of God or, or introducing Jesus Christ to them. However, uh, not so much around us, right? Not so much around us. So how can we get this stigma? Should we go to mission trip to a remote place? And get lashes from them, get punishment from them, get beaten by them. How can we have this stigma on our body? How can we have this stigma of Jesus Christ on our body then? The founding pastor, Reverend Evan Park, taught us that the stigma we have is the change of our body is the change of our body. For example, as we grow old, we may have wrinkles on our face, right? And we may have wrinkles on our, around our eyes, right? Around our eyes, right? Other may have ongoing back pain, right? As we grow old. And uh, knee pain or joint pain, right? And these are all the brand mark. These are all brand mark. These are, these can be stigma. These can be stigma on our body, on our body. However, there are two ways, two ways. The first is if we gain these pains or if we gain these wrinkles and, uh, <laughs> all these things, uh, while enjoying our life, going to club, dancing, drinking, right, gossiping, 
right? Spending my, uh, my time uh, for pleasure, right? Then that stigma, that brand marks, that uh, wrinkles and that pain are for the world, for pleasure, isn't it? For pleasure. So that becomes the stigma of pleasure or that becomes stigma of this world, right? Of this world. If we spend, uh, if we, if we, if we get these pains, if we get these wrinkles in uh, working for business only, right? Business, uh, skipping going to church and skipping uh, not going to church, not studying the word of God, right? Then that pains and that pains and wrinkles becomes the stigma of the business, right? Stigma of business. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? However, the wrinkles and pains, right? If we gain them while we are serving for Jesus Christ, while we are ministering for Jesus Christ, while we are evangelizing, while, while we are spreading the word of God, that wrinkles and that pains and that, you know, uh, what? Uh, this uh, old body, right? That the changes of our, our body, right? Become stigma. For Jesus Christ, stigma for our God, right? That's the that's 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 how we can get stigma of Jesus Christ on our body, on our body, right? Believe that all the sufferings and pains you receive and Tears and sacrifices you made for the kingdom of God are the stigma of Jesus, which will lead us into the life under God's amazing blessing, right? If we use our body, if we use our time, if we use our energy, if we use our money, if, I, if we use even our emotion, right? Sometimes we get hurt while serving for Jesus Christ, right? So if we use all of them, right? Uh, for, for the, for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the church and for God, for the word of God, for the kingdom of God. And if we get older, if we get wrinkled, if we get pain, if we get hurt, right? All of them become scars for Jesus Christ. That all of them becomes a stigma for Jesus Christ. All of them become the brand marks for, of Jesus Christ. Right? So, uh, how do we live right now is important, isn't it? How do we spend our time right now is important. We should spend our time. We should spend our money. We should spend our energy. We should, we should spend everything for the kingdom of God and for the sake of Jesus Christ. So that we may, like Apostle Paul, have a stigma on our body of Jesus Christ, right? Of Jesus Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, as I said, as I said before, the time we spent, the money we spent, all the energy we spent for the church and for Jesus Christ will become the glorious stigma of Jesus on our body, on our body. Amen. So let's uh, start using uh, all of them, right? Let's receive stigma of Jesus on our body. Amen. I mean, if you have a stigma of clubbing and dancing and drinking, what good it is? What good it is, right? You know, I, when I was young, I was really good at dancing. I was really good at drinking. I was re really good at socializing and you know going to clubbing, right? Uh, and finally, I got this uh, uh, back back pain, right? Disc sleep, sleep disc. What is what is what is for it, isn't it? But if you can say, I work for Jesus Christ, right? For example, yes, I remember, I, yeah, for example, let's say, you know, my eyes are so dim because I, I watch so much, so many Korean drama, right? What's good for it? Where can you, I mean, what, what can you say? What can you tell? What can you say to God? Father, I watch so many Korean dramas and my eyes are so dim, I cannot see clearly, right? 
But if you, in other way, right, if you read the Bible so much, if you read, if you study the Word of God so much, and your, your eyes started and started to do dimming, right, then you can pray to God, Father. Uh, I, I spend so much time and energy to reading the Bible, to study the Word of God, and my eyes are dim now. So, Father, please help me and, and, and heal my eyes, right? And, and brightens my eyes so that I can see clearly, I can read more, I can study the, your word more, right? And deeper. And I'm sure that God will uh, gladly hear your, uh, hear your prayer and will answer your prayer, right? So, in the same way, it's the same wrinkle, it's the same dimming eyes, right? It's the, it's the same thing. But it could be of the word, of this word, or it could be of Jesus Christ, right? So, uh, let's have this stigma of Jesus uh, on our body. That means we got to spend our time. We got to work for the church. We got to work for the kingdom of God, right? Let's keep praying that uh, by the 9th, it's 6th, 9th. Yeah, December that the CMCO may be uh, finished, right? And then the church may be allowed to go back to our, uh, the house of worship and, and pray together and, and worship God together, right? So that we can come together and serve God continually, right? Thank you. Right. So conclusion for today is we shouldn't withdraw from Jesus, right? We shouldn't withdraw from Jesus, right? We talk about the physical side of stigma, right? Physical side of stigma that Apostle Paul received this physical persecution, so he had this physical stigma on his body, right? Mm. But I explained as a, in, in the in the instruction introduction that what this stigma signifies, right? This stigma signifies that this person belonged to Jesus Christ forever, right? Forever. That's what stigma signifies. So, uh, not having stigma, right? Not having stigma means that we are, our people will withdraw themselves from Jesus Christ, right? People will leave Jesus Christ. That is the sign or the, that is the result of not having stigma, proper stigma on their body, right? If they have the proper stigma of Jesus Christ on their body, they will never, they will never leave Jesus Christ. They will never withdraw from Jesus Christ, right? But if they do not have this proper stigma on their bodies, they will withdraw from Jesus Christ. They will leave Jesus Christ one day. But, uh, as an, in, in this conclusion, I want to, I want to share what the significance, what the meaning of withdrawing from Jesus Christ or what the, what is the meaning of leaving Jesus Christ means in the Bible, right? Mm. So let's read John chapter 6 verse 66. John chapter 6 verse 66. It says, as a result of this many, sorry, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not working with him anymore. So we can see that uh, something happened, right? Mm -hmm. Something happened and the followers of Jesus Christ somehow stopped following Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So what was the issue? What was the issue? Jesus came to a synagogue in Capernaum, right? Capernaum. And he told something. Then many people left Jesus. Many people withdrew uh, themselves from Jesus Christ. So what was the teaching that Jesus taught? The teaching that Jesus taught is the two things. The two things that uh, hinders and two things that blocks uh, the people the, and breaks the heart of people, right? And these uh, two teaching, the first is, He is the living bread, came down from heaven, and whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life. You can see uh, there in John chapter 6 verse 54, right? John chapter 6 verse 54, it says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So Jesus told the followers of, of Jesus Christ that, 
I am the bread from uh, living bread from heaven, right? And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. And people start arguing among themselves of what? We are not a man eaters. What kind of what kind of you know uh, the factor this this is? What kind of group this is? What kind of uh, uh, study this is that uh, he is asking us to eat his flesh, right? He is asking us to drink his blood, right? Carnivalism, right? We're not man eater. We are far from it. How can how how dare uh, this man ask us to eat and drink his blood, right? And rest of it, right? So, and then, and then some, other group people, other group of people say, even if we agree to eat and drink his blood, how many people can be fed by his own body, right? He's, you know, he's not even bigger than one cow, right? So how how many people can be fed by him? So that was the issue when Jesus said, "I am the living bread." And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, right? They understood the physical side of it. And they said, no, we are not the eat man eaters. No, I mean, by you, how many can be saved? How many can receive eternal life? So they said, it is very difficult teaching. It is very difficult understanding. So they left Jesus Christ. They left Jesus Christ. Second teaching that hinders people was, John chapter 6 verse 62. John chapter 6 verse 62. What then if you should behold the Son of Man ascending where he was before? So what it means is Jesus is announcing and telling people that he is going to die, right? He is going to die. So that became a second hindrance to people. That I Jesus, we followed you so far that because you promised us eternal life, right? Because nobody, no churches, no pastors, no priests promised us the eternal life, but you promised us eternal life, so we followed you. And now what you are saying that you are going to die without giving us eternal life, right? What kind of foolish, what kind of you know, lie and false, falsehood it is, right? So that became the second hindrance to the people. And people say, oh, that's very difficult to understand, right? It's just too much for us. So they stopped following Jesus Christ. These are the two things why people withdraw themselves from Jesus Christ, from Jesus Christ. Because of these two topics, most of them left Jesus Christ. Greek word for to withdraw, I don't think it is here. Yeah. No, it is not here. The Greek word for the to withdraw is apelkomai. 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 It is used in various places of the Bible, right? I mean, it could be, there could be, sorry, eight or nine different meanings, but if I, if I, comprise and concentrate to about three biggest different meaning, right? Mm. The first, it means to return to their position. And this uh, apel komai, which is to withdraw, means to return to their own position, return to their uh, previous position, right? Return to their previous position. Before they started following Jesus Christ, they were living or working in their village or, or a certain place, right? So to leave Jesus means to go back to where they were before. To leave Jesus is to go back to where they were before. Right? That's the meaning of withdrawal. That's the meaning of leaving Jesus Christ. Departing from God means that they are going back to where they used to be. They are going to used to be. They, they, they used to be, right? Second is the, it means to look back. It means to look back. If you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 6 to 2, But Jesus said to them, No one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Right? Looking back, that is the withdrawal. I mean, 
what do you what what can you explain how can you explain about departing from god or the departing from the presence of god or departing from jesus christ or leaving jesus christ or leaving the faith of jesus christ uh, perhaps the most common explanation that we can come up with is that you know people you know uh, uh, was very faithful in the church one day right and then he somehow got hurt or got wrong teach, wrong understanding, and he left the church. And from that time on, he spread all kinds of bad news about Jesus Christ, about the church, about the congregation that goes to go to that church, right? Who those who work against Jesus Christ greatly, we may say, ah, these are the people, these are the types, these are the uh, figures that those who left Jesus Christ, right? However. Uh, the point that I want, I want to make today is, no, the Bible says, if we look back, that is, same as we depart from Jesus Christ. It's the time to work. It's the time to minister. But if we look back, just by looking back itself, right, that is same as uh, leaving Jesus Christ. That is same as leaving the presence of God. If we go back to where we used to be, right, not, not entirely by physical sense, right? Physical sense, we have to go back to, I mean, I have to go back to Korea, right? That is where, that is going back to where I used to be, right? But what about spiritually? After uh, following Jesus Christ, after receiving the word of God from Jesus Christ, right? After receiving the teaching from the Bible, right? Our concept, our understanding, our ideology are all changed, isn't it? Has been changed. But if we go back to what we used to believe, we, if we go back to the ideology that we used to live with, that is same as living Jesus Christ, right? That is same as living Jesus Christ. And if we're going to look back, oh, how good my life was, right? That is same as living Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Thirdly, it means to eat what is vomited. It means to eat what is vomited. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Proverbs 26, verse 11. Like a dog that returns to its vomit is a fool who repeats uh, his folly. The dog returns to eat its vomit, right? Uh, when we, when the things that we kind of kicked out, things that we kind of cast out from our body, right? Things that we cast out from our inner self, right? Lust, greed, all this pride, all these things that we cast out. But then we can't come back and eat, consume them or take them. Right? Once again to our uh, body, our in inner self, right? That is same as leaving Jesus Christ. That is, that is same as leaving Jesus Christ. Afterward, Jesus asked the 12 disciples, right? Or most of them, most of the followers left Jesus already. So now Jesus asked the 12 disciples, do you not want to go away also, right? Do you not want to go away also? And the Simon Peter, Apostle Peter, answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. What a wonderful answer and what a wonderful faith confession, isn't it? I believe in this sin, in this uh, sin, Apostle Peter, the Simon Peter, is the one who have this stigma, isn't it? Lord, you have the word of God. Where should we go to, right? Whom should we go to? He still believes that Jesus has the word of eternal life. Jesus is the one who will give him the eternal life, isn't it? Therefore, he does not look back. He does not eat what he what is vomited. Right? He does not return to previous position, right? He have this stigma, right? And he is not changed. He is not, he does not withdraw himself from Jesus Christ in this sin. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, do you believe that Jesus still has the eternal life? I'm sure you all said Amen, right? Do you believe that it is still worthy to stay by Jesus and live according to the word of God? Amen, right? Even in this time of great famine and difficulty? Amen, right? Let's not withdraw ourselves from Jesus Christ. Yes, we are living in this time of great difficulty, the time of COVID-19. Well, it depends on your situation. It could be really big in financial situation. It could be really big in a health issue. It could be really big in a uh, different area, different aspects, right? Unsolvable, uh, really difficult issue. However, let's not go back, right? Let's not withdraw ourselves. Let's not look back. Right? The way to overcome this time of difficulty is to have the stigma of Jesus on our body, right? The stigma that the face that never changes, right? Just like Apostle Peter, we kept confessing that no, Jesus has eternal life, and I know that Jesus will give us eternal life. Like Apostle Peter confessing that I have the stigma of Jesus on my body, so do not trouble me anymore. I will not. Be troubled by your questions or, or previous ideas or previous life. I am already disconnected from my previous life. My dear brothers and sisters, right? Jesus has the eternal life. Amen? And Jesus is the one who will give us eternal life as well. Amen? He will fulfill His promise. Eternal life will be given to us. Amen? So let's not withdraw ourselves from Jesus Christ, right? Let's have the stigma of Jesus on our body. And like Apostle Peter, let's announce it. Let's boastfully and gladly announce that I have the stigma of Jesus on my body. Therefore, I will never return to the previous self. I will never return to previous ideology. I will never return to previous myself. Right? I will never leave Jesus Christ. Right? Lastly, if we do so, if we really stick with Jesus Christ, if we stay by Jesus Christ, if we really have this stigma and announce that we have the stigma, and if we truly confess that Jesus, where we should go to when, when you have the word of eternal life, I believe. It's my, my own belief and confession that this time of COVID-19 will become another stigma of Jesus on our body. Amen? Amen. When we overcome it, right, this time of COVID-19 will become another stigma of Jesus Christ on our body. Right? Mm. Through that, we will glorify Jesus Christ. We will, we will confess, we will be able to confess that Jesus saved us. Jesus delivered us. Our Father God helped us. Amen? I really pray in the name of the Lord. I really bless in the name of the Lord. And may all of you who are listening to this word of God today receive this blessing and have the stigma of Jesus Christ on your body. Amen.